Okay, now on to the 10 myths of tennis. And uh, um, I hope you enjoy it. You'll probably have some arguments. And be sure and uh, leave your arguments down below. Or if you agree with me, leave the agreements too. So thanks a lot. And uh, here we go. So many pros say, don't copy the pros. Whatever you do, it's too complicated. You can't do it. Well, that's just a bunch of BS. You can do it. It's not that difficult to do. And virtually, no matter how the pros hit the ball, they all make the, uh, just about the same motion, uh, a foot before and a foot after contact. They have to. They, they found the best way to do it, and they have to do it that way. There's not a dozen ways to actually contact and hit a tennis ball. So copy the pros, but you got to know what they're doing. And that's the tough part about it. Uh, the unit turn, this is really a bad one because it turns you into a piece of concrete. The, the notion that your arms and your upper body and your hips are all going to go back as one unit is, uh, it's the best way to not ever be able to hit a good ball. Your arms are a whip, your wrist is a whip, and your body, your, your hips and shoulders are like a machine, and they rotate the whip, but they are doing very different things. What usually happens is people are taught low to high, and then the ball doesn't spin that much, or it goes into the bottom of the net, so they start yelling at themselves that they've got to get under the ball more. So then they go under the ball more. And what happens is they had a weaker shot and it goes more into the net and it spins less. Uh, locking your wrist or a fixed wrist. Well, this is terrible. This is the absolute worst thing you can do. Um, it was not, not too many years ago, it was taught everybody fix their wrist, lock your wrist. That's of course the way you had to hit the ball. And it's number one, it's the, the, the best way to get injuries, to injure your shoulder, injure your elbow, get tennis elbow, injure your wrist. Do not lock your wrist. Um, this is a complete fallacy. So if somebody's telling you to lock your wrist and hit low to high, that's the other thing that goes with locking your wrist. You're never going to hit a good ball. Oh, the windshield wiper. That's one of my very favorites. I've had more friends take lessons from pros on how to hit the windshield wiper. Oh my God. They're just, usually they're hitting the top of the racket and they're going over the fence or they hit him in the bottom of the net or no pro does the windshield wiper, even though it may look like they're doing it. They're not. This is one you want to throw out real quick. Uh, pointing the butt of the racket towards the ball and then pulling forward and whipping it around. Oh my God, this, this is another turkey. Um, it, it's almost like somebody is taking a picture of a whip and they get a, a one certain thousandth of a second picture of that whip and they go, oh, that's, that's how they do it, you know, because they can't really figure out how they, the pros do it. So, so they try to put their, put their students in the position that that whip is in at that one thousandth of a second. And it, it, it's a nightmare. This, this will never get you hitting a good, a good ball. Straighten your arm to hit through the ball, another turkey. I mean, all this is going to be is, uh, it's going to give your stroke just one gigantic push. You won't have much spin, um, not much power, and maybe you'll hit it, kind of, bunt it kind of consistently. But uh, I, again, here's, a, here's a, a situation where people take a picture of a whip, and some people do, some very good players do straighten their arms, but it's part of a whipping action. It's not that they're straightening their arm to hit through the ball. 
Roger Federer straightens his arm, but it's part of his whipping action. So it's not, it's not that he's straightening his arm so he can hit through the ball and then coming around. Nope, it's... Hit through the ball for a long time? No, can't do that. Uh, that's just a big old push. And do not follow through to your target. That's a big mistake. That just All it does is slow your racket head up. Uh, you don't get any dig into the strings. You, uh, it, it, you just wind up like the, the couple previous ones, the couple previous myths, you'll just wind up with a push. Do not try to straighten out. What you're doing is trying to straighten out a circle. And when you straighten out a circle, uh, you're going to lose velocity. You're going to be a pusher, and you'll be a pusher forever if you do any of these last couple of myths. They're, they're turkeys. People work on them forever. They rarely improve. And um, forget it. Don't follow through to your target. If somebody's telling you to do that, it's, it's not a good one. So I hope you have enjoyed these myths of tennis. Um, to me, they're myths. To you, many people have been so ingrained with some of these uh, tennis tips that uh, they'll want to argue like crazy and think I'm really crazy for saying them, but um, none of them work. Uh, people try them for years. They never get much better, and my goal is to get people better very quick. There is no reason why a reasonable athlete that, say, maybe a, a 2-0 or a 3-0 tennis player should not be able to learn how to hit super heavy topspin balls and improve rapidly. It doesn't take years and years and years. Again, as I mentioned before, just think of little kids. They play, they maybe start when they're 9 or 10, and they play a few years. By the time they're 13, they're number 16 in the country. They hit these beautiful top spin shots. How do they do it? Why do they do it? Why are they so much better than uh, an adult athlete who is much stronger, much more experienced than they are? Why, why do the kids do it? It's because... Uh, they can copy. Kids have a, 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 a brain that will just imprint. Whatever they do right, they can, they can copy it and repeat it, and adults don't have that. That's the one thing they're missing. But kids can learn it. Adults can't. Pros learned it when they were little kids. And uh, every pro thinks they've taught them how to do it, but I don't, that's really not the case. The case is that they have learned despite what they've been taught. Um, I think probably most pros might even have a hard time telling you how they do it, but they do it. They've, they're ingrained. It's, it, it's just been programmed into their brain. So you can hit a really super top spin shot. You can learn it really quick. It does not take years and years and years. I could, I could get somebody out on the court and in half an hour have them hitting super top spin shots. And in a very short time, like a month, they would have it so ingrained in their brains that they could do it when they're playing. It shouldn't take years and years and years like it does now. It's, it's Tennis is a real puzzle. It's such a fun game to watch when you see people doing it well. And it's so hard to do well because nobody teaches it right. And so uh, my videos, I, I hope, will correct that. But I hope getting some of these myths out of the way um, will make tennis more fun for you. And uh, anyway... Uh, that's it for now, and thanks for watching. Uh, be sure and uh, subscribe, and uh, I'll have another video coming out in not too long a time. So, bye-bye.